folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is my January 2024 reading wrap up. There are some physical books here. Um, yes, it was a, in the end a pretty good reading month. It took me a while to get going, um, but once I got going, I was actually finishing books quite quickly towards the end of the month um, for various reasons. But yes, it was a good reading month. I read 11 books, um, so that's good. Or at least finished 11 books. So. What did I start with? I started with a reread and I did it via ebook, but I do have a physical copy of Dead Man's Folly by Agatha Christie. This is one of my favorite poros. Um, I just randomly felt like rereading it. Month January is often a bit of a mystery month for me. It wasn't so much this year, but I just felt like rereading Dead Man's Folly, honestly, properly instead of just watching it. So um, that was a reread, so that was fun. Then I read a new book, a new Austin variation by Shana Grandinson, which was called Her Grace. And this one deals with some pretty dark topics. Um, so in this one, there is a Duke who has already married multiple times, but his sons have died. His wives have died because he's abused them. Um, and so he ends up insisting on marrying, marrying a very young Lizzie and she doesn't want to, but in the end she agrees. Um, on the, on the proviso that certain clauses are put into her marriage settlement. He, of course, just wants a son and once he has a son, um, he will start abusing her. Um, that's the plan. Um, and in this, Wickham is working for him. Um, so it's a different situation there as well. And the Darcy parents are still alive. It's a different situation there as well, and they meet in different circumstances. Um, it all works out at the end, obviously, but yeah, that does deal with some very, very dark things about themes about domestic abuse, so um, and essentially forced marriage and all that kind of stuff. So, so that was a very interesting read. Um, I liked it as I like most Shana Grandison ones I read. I don't, these authors, I don't always read every one they write because sometimes the tropes just aren't my thing. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed this one. Then I picked up haha, and devoured once it arrived Time of the Cat by Tansy Rain Roberts. So this is the novel Tansy kickstarted last year and I of course backed it, which means I have a nice shiny physical copy and a whole bunch of other things like candles and stickers and a quilted bookmark, uh, sorry, quilted postcard. So, Time of the Cat, it's essential. you know Tansy, she basically writes just for me. <laughs> um, and so this is about time travel. It is about time travel that is not possible without talking cats, hence the cat on the front, and time travel going wrong, and time travelers who are obsessed with a lost 21st, 20th century television show from Britain. Not Doctor Who, it does actually refer to Doctor Who and apparently those episodes are really well destroyed, but it invents an entirely new TV show that all these time travellers are obsessed with and so that plays into it, but there's also a whole bunch of shenanigans going on about time travel. So, and it's got footnotes. So much, uh, much to my amusement, after my amusement at the footnotes in the a history book that I read in December um, that I actually was talking to Tansy about. This has hilarious footnotes. So, <laughs> so hilarious footnotes are becoming a bit of a thing. Uh, yeah, so really recommend Time of the Cat. It's funny, it's entertaining, it's for all that it's like 400 pages, it's an absolute ease to read. Um, like I gobbled it up, honestly. Just read it so fast. So Time of the Cat. Thoroughly recommend. Then I finished, I read uh, Victory's Price by Alexander Freed, which is the third, I don't think it's third, um, book and final book in the trilogy, the um, Alphabet Squadron trilogy in the Star Wars universe. So um, this has a su some subtly queer characters, which were a little bit more, more in evidence in this one. But this is very dark. It is very much about, this whole trilogy is very much about when a war seems to have been won but is still being wrapped up and the effect that that has on 
ordinary soldiers on both sides, the ethics of warfare, the ethics of looking after your fellow soldiers, the ethics and consequences of justice that comes after war, um, and how that can affect how, how to deal with the difference between the people who gave the orders and the people who carried out those orders with no idea what was really going on. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. I won't say it was enjoyable, but it was well written. It was very interesting. The characters I did get a bit attached to some of them. Um, so yeah, it was interesting, interesting. So that was Victory's Price by Alexander Freed. Then I finally, finally finished, hang on, I'm just going to drop those two that I've already talked about, The Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I have been trying to read this since October 2022. I keep picking up and putting down, it should be right up my wheelhouse. It is well written. It is a kind of Regency-esque London it deals with magic and fairies. It deals with feminism. It deals with uh, people of colour trying to make their way in a very, very racist country. Um, everything that should be my better bread and butter, and yet I just couldn't quite connect with it. It's good. And it should be for me. But something, there was just a disconnect. And it took me a year and a half to read it. Um... And it's not that long, so I'm not quite sure at the moment what the disconnect is. Maybe it'll be better if I reread it and therefore, because I already know it's coming and it'll feel more, more cohesive. Um, maybe I just didn't click with the main character. Um, there is a second book. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up. Um, like I said, it's it should be everything I love and it's very well written. It just didn't quite click with me. Hmm. This is, of course, Zen Cho is an author of colour, so that was good for my goals this year. Oh, also, Time of the Cat also had queer characters, so um, yay! Goals for the year, going well. Um, then I read a whole bunch of um, Austin variations. Uh, a whole bunch of old ones that I've read before. But these were ones that I sort of hadn't really read when I looked at my Goodreads. I hadn't read them in two or three years. Um, so they weren't as familiar to me as some others are. Um, so I reread Entailed to Airs Female by Victoria Lynn. So this particular one involves a psychologically abusive Mr. Bennett. And Mrs. Bennett, who knows this and has learnt to keep herself strong but silent and look after her daughters... Um, and a Bennett aunt who is quite wealthy and has prepared for the time when her nieces and her sister-in-law are going to need assistance um, in maintaining themselves. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting. It means there's quite different personalities involved in some ways um, and the romances get very different. So, yeah, so that was one. Then I reread Mistress of Netherfield by Julia Winter. In this one, um, Lizzie was essentially, and you don't find this out until later, but Lizzie was essentially married against her will very early on as about like a 16 year old or whatever, um, when she was compromised by a guy who had mental health issues um, because of the war and the fighting that he'd seen. Um, he owned Netherfield. Um, and so when he died, she, about a year into their marriage, she inherited Netherfield. So she's the mistress of Netherfield. She lives with Charlotte in the Dower House in Meryton and she's leasing out Netherfield for to Mr Bingley. And so that changes her status completely. But also Darcy knows knew her husband but didn't know he'd been married until he died and her husband's brother, younger brother, comes to Darcy and says... I think there's a mystery about the way my brother died. My other relatives won't talk about it. Um, can I come with you and act as your valet or your secretary to try and find out what's going on? So 
he of course has his own uh, theories and wishes um, you know that Darcy's doesn't know about and gets suspicious about so yes that also deals with some quite very dark subjects in terms of what happened in Elizabeth's marriage um, but yes I reread that then I reread Mr. Bennett Takes Charge by Jan Rowland. Um, this is one where it's set around the time that um, Lydia's in Brighton. Um, Lizzie ends up not going to on the, on the trip to Derbyshire, I think. Um, and when Kitty approaches Lizzie and says... Lydia is talking about eloping with Mr. Wickham. Mr. Bennett actually goes, right, okay, this is a problem. I'm going to go and get Lydia. Uh, and it goes from there. So he's taking charge of his family because it turns out he really does care. And so when he's roused, he can actually take care of business. And then I reread Mr. Bennett Leaves His Study by Sydney Salia, in which um, before all of this happens, um, Lydia at 14 wants, is throwing a tantrum about wanting to be out and Mr. Bennett comes out of his study and notices and goes, hang on a second, this is not on, we need to change the way we're tra raising our daughters and get a governess and all this thing. And so the whole family thing calms down um, and therefore when the Bingleys and Mr. Darcy arrive, things are a bit different with, with the way the Bennets are. Then I picked up and read... Uh, this one, Queen Charlotte by Julia Quinn and Shonda Rhimes. So this is counting, this here, is counting as uh, an author of colour because it's a co-credit with Shonda Rhimes, who is the black director who um, created the television show. Julia Quinn, of course, is the original author of the Bridgerton books. So this is the prequel. Um, it's also counting as queer because there is a gay relationship between two footmen. Um, which is quite a strong thread running through the book. But this one comes with some... There's been a lot of darkness in some of these romances uh, this month in January. Um, this comes with some trigger warnings for essentially brutal, brutal descriptions of the very brutal treatments for madness that um, were around in the 18th century. Um, so because of the course, this is Queen George III, um, a young King George III getting married um, and he's already showing signs of the madness. Um, and he has a doctor who has very, very extreme and very, very brutal treatments to try. Um, and so this is causing a rift in his relationship with Charlotte just after their wedding. Um, but the rest of it is quite sweet. Um, it's a sweet romance, but with that and with a backdrop of the great experiment joining uh, black and white high society together because of course Queen Charlotte in this is very visibly descended from Africa. Um, yes, um, so there's a lot of actually quite serious stuff in what is very, a, a very sweet romance. So I read that, so that was good. That was a birthday gift actually from uh, Yannicka. Um, which means I read it really quickly after I unwrapped it. So, uh, yeah, it didn't stay on the TBR shelf very long. And then the last thing, the 11th thing that I read in January was a new to me, um, Austin variation. So there were two new to me Austin variations in this month. Um, this last one was called A Bouquet of Bennett's Mary's Story by Victoria Lynn. So you'll remember Victoria Lynn from, uh, Entail to Airs Female. So this, in this particular one, which is the first in a series in which I think the plan is that each Bennett daughter will end up married to Mr. Collins in varying different circumstances. In this case, um, Mr. Collins is a lot more sensible than he is in the original novel. Um, and they use Mrs. Bennett trying to shove him into, uh, and Mary is, is a little less harsh, a little less obsessed with, um, Fordyce's sermons um, and has 
has has learnt her lessons from Jane and Lizzie um, and is therefore a slightly sweeter character um, and they use Mrs Bennet trying to force Lizzie and Mr Collins together to hide the fact that Mr Collins is actually courting Mary um, and things go from there when Mary's a little bit more observant Mr Collins is a little bit more observant um, so yeah that was fun and that was the 11 things that I read in January two of them were by authors of, or co-written by authors of color and three of them had queer characters of some importance um yeah so it was a pretty good month overall even if there was a lot of rereading of Austen variations at least they weren't recent Austen variations they were older Austen variations I hadn't reread in a while so uh, and that was partly because by the end of the month I was reading a lot but also I knew I hadn't read much in the start of the month and I wanted to catch up and so those are really quick to read um but yes it was a good month of reading and I want to stop now because it's very hot in this room because this room has had the door shut all day um which means the air conditioning hasn't gotten through and it's like 35 degrees so yeah I want to finish good reading month always happy to discuss any of those books in the comments below um please like and subscribe and I'll see you all again really soon bye